The Supreme Court on Monday ruled federal employment law bans discrimination against LGBTQ workers. While many in the community call it a historic and life-changing decision, they argue it's one of many steps needed towards equality. Focus investigative reporter Paula Vassan has more on why. Melissa Smith says her tattoo shop is one of the rare places in her hometown of Owensboro where she feels accepted. Because outside these doors, they make me feel I, like I don't belong here. When she came out as a lesbian in her early 20s. I knew when I was like 11 years old. She says she lost friends. They just, they just ditched me. She lost her job in social work. I was the only one that got random drug tested. When she became an entrepreneur, needing a bigger place for her tattoo shop. She says a landlord told her something that stings seven years later. He took one look at me and said, we don't rent to people like you. Her hands were tied. And I was very angry. But as of Monday, one of those barriers has been lifted. It's a huge victory. The Supreme Court ruled a section of the 1964 Civil Rights Act, which bans workplace discrimination based on sex, race, and religion. Also applies to sexual orientation and gender identity. But the work is not done. Because Kentucky State and Representative Patty Minter says for people who live in nearly three quarters of the Commonwealth, there is still little protection against discrimination for those who are lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender and queer, or LGBTQ. She says discrimination in housing and public accommodations still exists. People who identify as LGBTQ could be asked to get off public transit. Uh, denied service in hospitals. Lawmakers say they'll file a statewide fairness bill in January, adding LGBTQ discrimination protection that's still needed. Oh, Others wrong. call such efforts simply, simply wrong and a threat to religious freedom. I Bruce House Connect is a policy analyst, analyst at Focus on the Family, on the a conservative family. Christian ministry based in Colorado. But we also do not want to see religious people losing their livelihood uh, because they refuse to do something that violates their faith. In November, a wedding photographer filed a lawsuit against the city of Louisville, which passed a fairness ordinance 21 years ago. The photographer claimed the city's law that would force her to photograph same-sex weddings went against her religious beliefs. About three months later, the U.S. Department of Justice agreed, saying in a statement, forcing a photographer against her conscience to express her support for a wedding that her faith opposes violates the Constitution. The photographer couldn't talk about her pending case, so we spoke with her attorney. Anytime the government can tell someone to Right now, Kentucky is one of 27 states that exclude sexual orientation and gender identity in their non-discrimination laws, including housing and public accommodation. Chad Benefield, who lives in Owensboro, says outside of the 20 cities and counties in Kentucky with LGBTQ anti-discrimination ordinances, prejudice is a reality. It's happening, and it's happening a lot. Without more legal protection, he says many are afraid to speak up about complaints, leading to underreporting. While places with fairness ordinances track complaints, those numbers are often in the single digits, according to local human rights commissions. The Kentucky Commission on Human Rights, the state agency charged with investigating discrimination complaints, says they have no cases of LGBTQ discrimination. Since sexual orientation isn't a protected class, according to the Kentucky Civil Rights Act, such cases are outside the scope of their agency. Agency. As a result, Smith well, says she and others like her suffer. I think there's a certain level of stress that we just sort of get used to. Despite the Supreme Court's recent decision banning LGBTQ workplace discrimination, there are federal exemptions. Employers with less than 15 people, for example, are excluded. Many argue the law must go much further, mandating an end to all types of discrimination and taking more action when complaints arise. For Focus, I'm Paula Vassan.